My name is uh, Swami Murthy. I'm a clinical cardiologist and an echocardiographer from uh, Petrie City, Georgia. So uh, Catherine already went over the stages of uh, valvular heart disease, the ABCD. This is, uh, I think, really extension from the heart failure. It was really a heart failure guidelines that first came up with this concept. So just looking a little bit more detail in the stages of aortic valve disease, stage A means you're at risk for developing aortic valve disease, somebody with bicuspid aortic valve, maybe somebody with aortic sclerosis, but they don't actually have disease. Uh, B would be patients with mild to moderate disease. So the first step, they have to have some anatomical abnormality of the aortic valve. It either has to be calcified, fibrosed, bicuspid. It needs to be an abnormal valve. And the gradients are going to be in the, you know, the Vmax will be somewhere between 2 to 2.9 uh, meters per second. So these are your mild to uh, moderate patients uh, who are, uh, by definition, asymptomatic. Stage um, C1 are these asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis, which we all see. These are the classic. They have a high gradient. They have a low valve area. Their ejection fraction is normal, um, but they are asymptomatic. We follow these patients for symptoms. Uh, I think we're all seeing these, and these should, patients should be obviously followed very carefully. The recommendations are an echocardiogram every 6 to 12 months, uh, part of the guidelines. And if you don't believe that they're asymptomatic, then doing a, uh, an exercise test to confirm the asymptomatic test is certainly reasonable. Uh, stage C2, I, I guess, for severe AS is probably one of the unicorn patient, some patient with an EF of 15 and severe aortic stenosis who just is asymptomatic. Hard to believe, but I guess they're out there. We don't really see those patients very often. Now. What I've been asked to talk about is the uh, low flow, low gradient uh, patients. So stage D are symptomatic aortic stenosis. These are patients, so stage D1, we're gonna skip over. Those are the classic patients, high gradient, low valve area, normal ejection fraction, symptomatic. Those patients need a referral to the valve center, the Marcus Valve Center. Um, now stage D2 and D3, we'll go into a little bit more detail here. These are the patients, you think of it as a discordance between the valve area and the gradient. You, you get the echo report back and the valve area is low. It's less than one, so that's severe aortic stenosis. But then your gradients are not high enough to call it, to, for it to be D1. So these patients are gonna fall into D2 and D3. Uh, as far as, you know, when are we going to, how do we get more awareness about this? How, if we're not, listening to our patients with a stethoscope and hearing an unexplained systolic murmur and, and asking, taking a history, are you short of breath? Or, you know, what is your exercise capacity? We don't take detailed histories from our patients and do detailed physical examinations. We're never gonna find these patients. So the way to spread awareness is really to spread history and physical and you know, just the basics of medicine. So when you hear an unexplained murmur, you get the report back and you should, you should say, well, that was a pretty prominent systolic murmur the patient had. The valve area is low at 0 0.6, but the gradient's only 25, and the cogwheels need to start spinning, and you need to start looking more carefully at the echo. Is this a D2 or D3 patient? So the D2 patient is the patient with a low ejection fraction, less than 50%. And remember, they have to have some pathology of the aortic valve. If the aortic valve looks completely normal, it's not aortic stenosis, right? The valve has to be calcified, it has to be bicuspid, fibrotic, thickened, rheumatic, something, it has to be an abnormal valve. And the uh, valve area is less than one, but your gradients are low. Then uh, that's the low ejection fraction patient. And then D3 is the same patient, uh, but just they have a normal ejection fraction. Now, the guidelines, you know, they, call, they say the stroke volume is low. The stroke volume index in these patients is low at less than 35 milliliters per meter squared. Pretty easy to calculate on a standard echo. Uh, but actually, there is a category where they can actually have a normal stroke volume and still be D3. That's, uh, that's been addressed a little bit later. So these patients are, remember, symptomatic, abnormal valves, low valve area. So this is uh, actually from um, 
General Medical College of Cardiology case reports from February of 2022. This is actually work from, you know, the pioneer of this work is Dr. Um, Philippe Pirabeau from Ottawa, who's done all this work. I'm sure all of us have seen these slides. This is just the most recent one. This is just a high level view of it. So we, when you look at aortic stenosis, we're going to divide it into our high gradient severe AS, which we're not talking about in this talk. And then we have, the concept is we have a discordance between the aortic valve area and our gradient. And then, we're going to, then once again, we have patients who may have a normal flow and low gradient. And, and then the next uh, categories are the classic D2 and D3 that you see, the classical low flow, low gradient with low EF and then the one with preserved EF. So we'll zoom in a little bit more here. So just going into this slide and so the definition of a uh, classical low flow, low gradient patient is valve is less than one, mean gradient is less than 40. Okay, thank you. Uh, gradient is less than 40. Uh, the stroke volume index is less than 35 and EF is less than 50. So that patient, the guidelines are to do a dobutamine stress echo. The, the, the protocol is that it should be started at five mics and go up by five mics to a maximum of 20. And what we're looking to see is, does the gradient become greater than 40 with the valve area less than one? So if you, you keep doing dobutamine stages from five, 10, 15, 20, until that happens. If the valve area becomes, stays less than one, but the gradient now becomes greater than 40, now you can diagnose true severe aortic stenosis. You can optionally also just do a calcium score on those patients, a, a calcium score of the aortic valve, as was shown earlier. Uh, and the patients who have the preserved ejection fraction, the rec guidelines are to go to a calcium score. So the dobutamine echo should only be ordered for patients with a low ejection fraction because the concept is they don't their flow is low, we need to make it normal and then measure the aortic valve gradient. That's the concept. So please don't order a dobutamine echo on somebody with a normal ejection fraction. He's bringing his laptop in there, so. um, this is the same thing you can see with the dobutamine echo. There's, we can have a pseudo severe aortic stenosis category, a severe AS and intermediate uh, category. The, as shown earlier with the calcium score, if it's more than 2000 for a male that's considered severe more than 1,200 for a female. So the common errors that happen on echo would be uh, underestimating the left ventricular outflow tract diameter. Uh, so we always want to look at other methods. We want to confirm the low flow state by other methods as well that are usually done on our echoes. We want to look for other causes of low flow, low flow state. Particularly, we need to look for amyloid, look for red flags for amyloid. Many of these patients with low flow, low gradient are actually amyloid patients and they're not gonna benefit from a TAVR. Um, and then also confirm that you truly have low gradient from multiple windows. Don't just look at only the apical. So I'll show you a quick case here. This is an 80 year old male that I saw recently he comes in with has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, uh, sent by primary care for a worsening systolic murmur and complaints of dyspnea and exertion. EF is 45 to 49, VMAX 29. They're the mean gradient 21, the valve area is 0.9, and the DVI 0.24. So it does seem to fit the criteria for D2, the classical low flow, low gradient, low EF. He had no AI, no other valve disease, normal RV function. Um, so there's the valve. You know, it's calcified, seems to be limited. I'm not gonna show you the whole echo out of t interest of time. But interestingly, we did a calcium score on this patient and it was 1,067. So it's not high enough to meet criteria. So the question is, should we proceed with a low uh, dose dobutamine echo stress test next? Next case is a 94 year old female came for a second opinion for aortic stenosis. Uh, she has a history of hypertension lipids. She's short of breath and had moderate AS by uh, echo in July of 2021. On exam, she has an impressive murmur. EF is 73, 2.5, mean gradient only 15, but the valve area is 0.6. DVI, eh, 0.35, not, and there's a stroke volume index is low, blood pressure is good. That's the other thing to remember, is that when you measure these patients' echoes, they, it needs to be done when they're normotensive. If they're hypertensive, it does not count. You've got to get them normotensive. So we decided to do a calcium score, it's only 419. 
So in this case, she has a normal ejection fraction and uh, calcium score is only 419 of the aortic valve, so she doesn't meet criteria. But interestingly, we found the reason for her shortness of breath from the CT. Well, well first of all, I'll go to the error. The error in this case, uh, one of the teaching points is when you see a DVI that's low, uh, high, like 0.35, that usually means that the LVOT diameter was not measured correctly. And in this case, it was 1.6. And um, I went back, this is sort of an off-axis frame. I found a better uh, loop and remeasured it. It was more like 1.8, 1.9, recalculated the valve area is 1.2. So it fits with moderate AS. And then here's the answer. She has a large hiatal hernia. And uh, one of the benefits for me in, in working for Piedmont Heart, one of the just 30 feet away from me is when I do clinic is Eric Susi, thoracic surgeon. I'm saying, Eric, why didn't you take a look at this lady? She's a, she's a good 94-year-old. So that's what's You guys what's always happening. say that. I don't want you to say that. <laughs> Jim and I get that call. You said 97-year-old, and you're like, God, that patient looks re is a really good 96-year-old. Exactly. They come in, and, and we're like, oh, my God, you're still 96. But her coronary calcium <laughs> score is only 19, so... So she missed. So then the final thing, so just <laughs> this is to show you the, so just remember dobutamine stress echo for low EF, calcium score of the aortic valve for normal EF. This is, and they wanted me to talk about beyond, this is maybe something that's coming up. When we, we talk about flow, but it's really just milliliters per meter second, but flow is really volume per time. So these investigators calculated flow by taking the stroke volume divided by the ejection time in seconds. And what they found is that for our patients with the mean, you know, valve area less than one, mean gradient less than 40, if the flow is greater than 210 milliliters per second, this would con confirm severe aortic stenosis. So they looked at outcome data to come up with this. So this may be something new coming down the road.